Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. After the 109 project I wanted to build something easy. I choose the Eduard Super 44 series P47D Thunderbolt, the bubble top version. You can choose between 5 marking options, the instruction manual is very nice and easy to understand and also you have the new style of decal sheet. The included canopy mask is very useful, especially if you want to work with bubble shaped canopy. Actually, this is a plaid kit in Eduard's package. The surface details are excellent with beautiful thin panel lines. For this build, I also use the Eduard's upgrade photo white set for this kit. Not too many parts in the kit, it's quite simple. Fuselage, wings, landing gears, propeller and, and basically that's it. I started the build with the wings. First, I cut off everything from the wings. With a 0.3mm drill bit, I drilled 8 holes for the guns and one for the pitot tube. Then I cut off the flaps with a 0.1mm photo edge saw. It's not easy to use this saw because it's quite flexible and easy to bend, but you can cut a super thin line with it. This plane had massive flaps. It looks pretty cool if they are extended. After this I glued in the landing gear bay PE parts and then I thinned out the edge of the wings with the diamond files. First I started with the 200 and then the 400 and finally I shaped it with the 600 diamond file. It is necessary if the flaps are extended. To glue the parts together I used the ordinary white cup Tamiya glue and the green cup extra thin glue. To keep the parts together while the glue is set, masking tape is the best option. I filled in the gaps on the landing flaps with styrene sheet and cut the excess off. I used my homemade sanding sticks to shape the flaps. You can make these sanding sticks for yourself. All you need is a couple of popsicle sticks, a double sided tape and various of sanding papers. Easy to make them and super cheap. After I prepared the wings, I started to work on the cockpit. I believe that the seat from the PE set is a little bit too big, but it looks pretty good, much better than the original seat from the kit. Actually, there is no cockpit in the kit. There is a seat and the instrument panel and, and basically that's it. That was the reason why I bought the extra PE parts to upgrade the cockpit a little bit. I modified the seat, I added the frame behind it. I used 0.3mm tubes. Because the PE seat is bigger than the original one, I had to change the floor of the cockpit. I used styrene sheet for this. I painted the interior in Tamiya cockpit green. The P47's cockpit was quite roomy, air conditioned and well protected, and the bubble canopy offered excellent all-around visibility. Pilots love these aircrafts. The side panels are rounded. I used a simple pan to shape them. I added an extra detail on the floor using black painted masking tape. The seat belts from the PE set are also big, but they look pretty nice. The color of the side panels are a bit different, so I blended them with cockpit green and then washed it with Tamiya's panel liner. The cockpit is done. I put the instrument panels and the seat in later. I glued the fuselage and the wings together. The fit is excellent, basically no need for filling. 
The P-47 Thunderbolt was produced by Republic Aviation. The first flight was on the 6th of May in 1941 and the last aircraft left the assembly line in 1945. They made 15,636 aircraft in total in several different variants. Its armament was 850 caliber machine guns, four in each wing. It could also carry external fuel tank, bombs and 5-inch rockets. When fully loaded, the weight was almost 8 tons. The Thunderbolt was one of the heaviest fighters in the World War II era. With a 0.1mm saw, I cut the elevators. I didn't cut them off completely, just scratch them and bend them down a bit. There were a couple of tiny little gaps. I used dissolved putty to fill them up. I applied it with a toothpick. Now the model is ready for the paint. First I cleaned the whole surface with alcohol and then I applied a primer coat before painting. It refers imperfections and provides an excellent base layer for the paint. I used Mr. Surfacer 1200. I chose grey primer instead of black under the metal paint. I didn't want to create a shiny metal finish. I think staying with a matte grey surface in this scale is much better. This middle line wasn't deep enough, so I had to rescribe it. You might wonder why I didn't glue the flaps before the primer. Well, the answer is very simple. I forgot it. But better late than never. After I fixed all the errors, filled all the gaps, rescribed all the sanded panel lines and glued the flaps in, it's ready for the metal paint. I used my favorite Mr. Color SM series of paints for this metal finish. I like them, they are sturdy and the metal pigments are microscopic, easy to mix and paint them. I used a darker tone on the gun bay covers. And finally, I blended the entire surface over with a very thin layer of Mr. Color Silver No. 8. The front of the engine cowling is red. If you want a brighter tone of red, paint white underneath. I always keep the leftover paint masks for the previous models. I use this curved shape one to mask the end of the olive drab part on the spine of the fuselage. The landing gear bays are yellow-green. After painting, I came up with the idea to make the three massive hinges for each landing flap. 
Why didn't I think of it before painting? No one knows, but it would have been a little bit easier. Well, it doesn't matter now, but you can learn from my mistake. So I cut small diamond-shaped styrene pieces to imitate them. Easy to make them and they look quite good. I fixed the paint and applied two layers of clear coat to prepare the surface for decals. The kit includes the new style of decals. Don't forget to use decal chemicals during the process. Unfortunately, the yellow stripes on the wings are wrong. If you place them where they are supposed to be, the stripes are not long enough. I checked a lot of original pictures for their positioning. What's more, I found four original pictures of this very aircraft, and on those photos clearly show the position of the yellow stripe with the black edges. So I must and painted them. It took more time than I anticipated, but the result was pretty good. Here is a quick tip. Don't use yellow masking tape on yellow paint. You are not going to see the edge very clearly. That's why I used blue masking tape to mask the black edges. After this interlude, let's finish the decals. This new style of decals are fantastic. After it dries, you can peel off the carrying film from the top. The result is amazing thin paint underneath. Absolutely fantastic. I love it. The next step was the engine. First, I remade the pushrod tubes. I cut off the plastic parts and then scribed horizontal lines on the cylinders to imitate the cooling ribs. I used the hobby blade for this work. I cut brass tubes to replace them. I used a lot of 0.3mm tubes for this project. This side fits perfect to this scale. I glued them with gel super glue. It gives you more time to position the pieces before it sets. I applied a tiny drop of dissolved putty to the tip of the rods. I used Mr. Color Silver 8 for the engine and black for the details. The P47 was designed around the famous Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wast 18-cylinder radial engine. Same as in the Corsair or the Hellcat. If you click the link on the screen or in the description below, you can watch how I built this engine in 1 in 48 scale. The engine was boosted with a massive turbocharger system, which increased the high altitude performance. The supercharger pipes run along each side of the cockpit to drive the turbine at the belly of the fuselage, about halfway to the tail and the cockpit. Because of the supercharger system, the P47 was a big fat bird. Compared to the other radial engine designed fighters like the Corsair, the Hellcat or the Fukavu 490, the P47 was quite chubby. For weathering the engine I used brown, dark brown and black panel liners.
I also wanted to make the ignition cables, but my tiniest wire was too chunky. I wasn't satisfied with the results, so I skipped them. Well, it's not perfect without the cables, but better than it was. This 18-cylinder Pratt & Whitney radial engine delivers over 2000 horsepower to a massive 4-blade propeller. The P-47 Thunderbolt was the first US fighter to use a 4-blade propeller. The tips of the propeller blades were yellow. I used rubber black instead of black for the blades. The masking sheet is handy, especially when it's time to paint small curvy parts such as our wheel rims. If you don't have masking sheet, no problem, you can make it for your own. Like here at the propeller hub. Now let's finish the interior. After the seat, I put the instrument panel in place. I believe it's not precise enough, but it's absolutely not visible through the thick canopy. There is no control stick in the kit, so a small piece of tube does the job. Most of the time I don't plan for all of the modifications that I do, like this one, to cut the canopy into two pieces. If I would have planned to open the canopy, I would have detailed the cockpit a little bit more. Maybe next time. Anyway, I used a thin 0.1mm saw again. I worked very slowly not to crack it. The provided masking sheet was super helpful. For weathering I used highly diluted Tamiya panel line grey and dark grey. I usually try to only use a weathering color a couple of tones darker than the paint. That's why I used grey. Black would have been too aggressive for my taste. If you like more contrasty solutions, use darker tones. I used the liners from the bottle around the engine, where oil and grease dirt may be more intense. Tamiya's panel line series are annual base paint. You can make them thinner with the X20 thinner. You can make your own colors, whatever you want. Oil paints are also perfect for this job. I forgot to make scratches on the olive drop and the yellow areas, so I made them and re those areas. After weathering I fixed the surface with a layer of matte varnish.
I glued the 0.3 mm gun barrels, believing the difference is significant. You can see the original in the corner. I used super glue to make a strong bond by gluing the landing gear struts. Other lovely little details are the hydraulics at the landing gear bay. Again, I use 0.5 and 0.3 mm pipes. The rocket tubes under the wings in the kit are not too detailed, so I made them from actual pipes. I use super glue and thin masking tape for this job. I think it looks more like tubes, because they are. I found the right piece to improve the pylons from a leftover piece set from a World War I Albatross. This is why I keep all these leftover P parts. It was time to put the shoulder straps in. According to the original photo that I found, I leaned them over the sides of the cockpit. I drilled a small hole on the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer for the antenna. I used Uschi van der Rosten fine elastic rigging. I think it was an excellent little project. I enjoyed it and I had no problems whatsoever. 
I hope you liked it and see you next time, maybe in the supersonic era.